Welcome back. The time now is 648. One of the best selling wines on the market is Rosé. It's also one of the most misunderstood with a reputation of having no character. Well, Clark Trim, who has a lot of character, is here with us this morning from Colonial Wine and Spirits, joining us, joining us with reasons why we should make Rosé a part of our collection. Good morning to you, Clark. Good morning. It's Thanks nice for to be being here. here. Yeah. Good. Okay, so let's talk about Rosé. First off, Describe it a little bit for people that just may have brushed it off as not anything they would like. Well, it has a, a very unearned reputation as being kind of a pop wine, and it's actually a very serious wine. It's been very uh, popular or wine of choice in Europe, places like Provence for years. The styles are very varied. Um, in the U.S., it kind of got a bad rap in the 70s when uh, a winemaker actually made a mistake and was making a white Zinfandel and you get a white wine from red grapes by uh, removing the juice immediately from mm -hmm. the pulp and the skins and he left it too long the wine turned pink and it got a little too sweet and there was the beginning of white Zinfandel that was Sutter Home Winery uh, and people in the US kind of have associated rosé with white Zinfandel that's not the case at all these wines have a lot of character they're from on a scale of dryness from bone dry all the way to sweet and uh, all stops in between. Okay, so what should rosé be paired with? It's so versatile. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you have rosé of Pinot Noir. You think of the Pinot Noir as a grape that's very versatile with most reds all the way down to uh, poultry, salmon, and then you have Grenache here, mm -hmm. uh, rosé of Grenache. Uh, those are wines that you would want to serve with Mediterranean style foods, okay. then Syrah. Uh, you know, Syrah is bold. That will stand up to a beef roast, uh, even a steak. So these wines are extremely... You think about rosé of Pinot Noir, rosé of Cabernet Sauvignon, and so on, and you, got, you have the characteristic of the grape varietals that we all know as red wines right. in a lighter-bodied wine that is a rosé, and it's, uh, it's designed to be able to chill down and serve cold so it's a perfect uh, it i mean we're saying um everything is coming up rosé the weather's getting warmer outside perfect you know, time for perfect it perfect timing we want to i mean it's natural to kind of evolve away from the uh the red wines that are served at warmer temperatures chill these down serve it with the same thing you would serve the red varietal with and kind of get past that uh notion that all pink wine is sweet and not so serious. Gotcha. Uh, talk about a few of your favorites. We're almost out of time, but a few of the favorites that you've brought here. Well, these wines can be made in steel wines. These okay. are all steel wines here. They can also be made as sparkling wines. One of my very favorite wines uh, to serve anytime is a Brut Rosé. Okay. Uh, but then th this comes, this is a wine you'll find in Provence along, uh, you walk along the street cafes and you're going to find the locals there enjoying these wines on the street cafe. And the price variety here? We are looking at ten ninety nine up to a hundred dollars for this Brut Rosé here. Fantastic. Some great information as always from Clark Trim at Colonial Wine and Spirits. You can always go visit them and if you have any questions they're going to help you along the way with not just rosés but any other wine or spirits you may have questions about. They're located there on Markham Street. Clark, thanks it's as always. Thank great you. to know more about rosés.